Welcome to our Minecraft project of Carmarthen through the ages. Did you know that Carmarthen is actually the oldest town in Wales? We're going to take you on a guided tour around our town and explain how this has developed over time. We're firstly going to walk over the tidal river that flows around the town, the River Towy. The River Towy is 75 miles long and it is the longest river that flows entirely within Wales. The river was an important reason why people decided to originally settle in Carmarthen because it provided a route to bring ships into the town. The ships transported food, animals and materials, which helped people build the town. One of the things that the river is famous for is coracle fishermen, which is why we have the coracle as our school logo. Coracles are small boats and have been used in Britain since before the invasion of the Romans. They were made of canvas and stretched over a frame of split rods, but in ancient times they used animal skins instead of the canvas. The nets used to be made by spinning the hairs of cow's tails, with the cow's horns bathed into the net grains. Fishermen worked in pairs with the nets stretched between two coracles to catch the fish. During the 1860s, there used to be 400 coraclemen on the tally, but now only 12 licenses have been issued. As we move around Castle Hill, we can see Carmarthen Castle. This has been built 20 metres above sea level and provides a good view around Carmarthen and a good location next to the river. The first Norman castle started being built in 1093, further down the river by William Fitz Baldwin, but this was destroyed and then rebuilt on the site of the Roman fort in 1109. The castle was originally built in wood and was captured and destroyed on several occasions before being rebuilt in stone between 1181 and 1233. Llewellyn Fell, the first Prince of Wales, captured the castle in 1215 and held it until 1223 before it were reverted to the English crown. The castle was captured by Owain Glyndor in 1405. By 1456, Edmund Tudor, the father of Henry VII, took possession of the castle during the War of the Roses, but he died there later that year. An eight-cell jail was later built in the Inner Bailey, which was then converted into a new county jail in 1789. In around 1860, a two-storey police station and lock-up was built between the outer and inner walls of the castle. It was used as a place to hold prisoners in transit to the nearby courthouse. It is said that there are secret underground tunnels which run between the courthouse and the castle to help transport the prisoners. Outside the castle we can see Knott Square and a statue built in honour of Sir William Knott, who was a British military leader in British India and died in 1845. This was also the site of the death of Bishop Farrar, who was the Bishop of St David's in 1548. Bishop Farrar committed various crimes and was ordered to be executed at this site by being burnt at the stake. The town folk liked Bishop Farrar and didn't want to see him executed, so a bribe of an acre of land by the river was issued to whoever would be willing to set him alight. One person stepped forward, set him on fire and claimed their prize of land, but that person sadly died shortly after from the plague. The Black Death. Whilst Bishop Farrar was ablaze, the people in the town felt sorry for him due to the pain he was in, so someone stepped forward and knocked him on the head with a staff to kill him and put him out of his pain. This is the Guild Hall, which has been the Crown Court and Magistrates Court in Carmarthen since the 1770s, but the earliest reference to the building dates back as far as the mid 14th century. The ground floor used to be split into two magistrate courts but this was closed in 20 
16. The first floor is home to Grand Former Crown Court. It has seen many historical trials during its times, including those of the Rebecca riots. In 1894, Thomas Richards was found guilty in the courthouse of murder and was sentenced to death by hanging in Carmarthen Jail on November 29, 1894. He was the last person to be hung in in 1966, a by-election took place to determine the next mayor for Camarlin. Gwynfor Evans then became the first ever played Cymru MP. Around 2,000 people witnessed the victory of at the Guildhall, singing the national anthem after the results was announced. A permanent reminder of that night in 1966 now stands outside the Guildhall, recreating the moment that Gwynvor Evans took to the famous steps and waved to his adoring public. As we move along Spillmont Street, we can turn directly into the car park, which is the site of a hidden underground nuclear bunker which was built in the mid-80s. People park on top of it every day, oblivious to what exists under their feet. This was built due to an escalation in the Cold War that saw the US planning to install cruise missile bases in the UK. Prime Minister Margaret Thatcher encouraged local councils to build nuclear shelters with a promise of a grant to cover the majority of the cost, rumoured to be around £400,000. In 1986, around 7,000 people descended on Carmarthen to form a human chain in protest at the bunker's construction. The bunker contains three rooms, a generator, a map of Wales on the wall and a telephone. If the siren had gone up to signal that bombs were going to happen, people in the town would have fled for safety in the bunker, although it was nowhere near big enough to hold all the people from the town. As we continue to move along the Spillman Street, we turn right into the site of the Ivy Bush Hotel. Behind the Ivy Bush was the site of the first large-scale Steadford in Wales, which dates back to 1451 under Thomas ap Griffith of Clandidon. The Steadford is a festival of Welsh literature, music and performance. Originally, the the Eisteddfod was only open for professional Welsh bards, but is now far more inclusive with thousands of adults and children from across the country competing in this every year. The main prize is a chair because throughout the medieval period, high back chairs where armrests were reserved for royalty and high status leaders in the military and religion. The earliest known bardic chair made from an Edsedford was built in Carmarthen in 1819.